Well, time now for our daily debate. Uh, Theresa May is meeting European leaders in Berlin this morning ahead of next week's tricky G20 summit. So today we're asking what can we expect from that meeting in Germany indeed today and next Friday. Well, joining me now are the journalist and writer Nabila Ramdani and the European political commentator Nina Schick. Welcome to you both. And Nina, as far as I can tell, it's quite unusual to have these pre-meetings before uh, a G20 meeting and it's basically been called by the host German Chancellor because she's a bit worried about what to do about Trump. Well, yes, Angela Merkel is very concerned. And when she was addressing the Bundestag this morning, she laid out several things that she wants to fight for in the G20 summit. One is that she said she doesn't believe in isolationism, protectionism turning inward. So this is, of course, a reference to Trump's America first rhetoric. And second, she said she would put climate change at the heart of those talks. So what she's hoping to do is present a very united European flank whilst the transatlantic relationship is suffering since the advent of Trump. Nonetheless, even within the, the European countries, there is a divide, and particularly between the Eastern and Western European countries on the issue of uh, migration and refugees. I mean, there's a new divide opening up, isn't there, Nabila, which is that, as you know, the British have put on ice their invitation to a state visit to Donald Trump. Angela Merkel's got worries. And, and what does the new President Macron do? Goes and invites Trump uh, to France's most holy day, Bastille Day, on July the 14th. The, uh, witness the parade. I mean, is he selling out? Well, you're quite right to highlight the, the new development. And in fact, I think President Macron is very much aware that he overdid the Trump baiting uh, in Brussels at the G20, a G7 uh, summit. And he's now invited Trump for the Bastille Day par parade. And the idea is to unite the two countries and unite the in honor of the so he's both kind the of French. Going around the back of uh, Chancellor Merkel and indeed uh, uh, Mrs. May. Yeah, I think. It, it, the visit might actually be seen as a foreign policy success by the French over the British. As we know, uh, Trump was put off by a visit to the and UK. And over Angela Merkel. And over who? Angela Merkel as well. So I think, uh, but I think it, it ties in with uh, President Macron's uh, pragmatic nature. He's very much somebody who wants to get on with everyone and seeks compromise. And that's a, 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 a way of doing it, in, in a sense. But Merkel is very pragmatic as well. I mean, in 2014, the US became Germany's most important trading partner, even surpassing France. So she knows that she has to position herself in a very delicate place where the public is very much against Trump for things such as his America first rhetoric, for his position on climate change. But the business community in Germany wants to very much keep those trade links open. So she, whilst has to posture publicly and has been doing so, you know, I think there's been a lot of support for her since the election of Donald Trump because she has been positioning herself. But do you think she would invite Donald Trump to the unification ceremonies? Probably not. Probably not. I don't think the so. In that sense, do you think there is now a, a bit of a tension between France and Germany on this? I don't think so. I think Merkel and Macron are working very closely together. They know that one of their most important things for their in the next five years is how to uh, rejuvenate the European Union, what to do with the future of the Eurozone. Paris and Berlin still have many differences on that, but they are united on the fact that in the next five years there will have to be reform in the EU and in the Eurozone. So I, I think. Mean, uh, I mean, Macron became president partly on a populist wave. I mean, I know he's a mainstream person, but he knocked aside all the conventional politicians. And we're beginning to see, aren't we, an element of French nationalism emerging rather than European Union unity. Very much so. I think Macron is at heart an, an old-style French leader in the tradition of Charles de Gaulle who wanted to push a French greatness. And likewise, Macron wants to revive uh, France's reputation in the world. And he will very much be using the G20 summit in an attempt to do so. But he has to reconcile a, a historical sense of aloofness and arrogance even with his personal inclination to want to get on with everyone and uh, French statesmen have historically been very prickly and very difficult indeed to deal with and we've seen how uh, Macron is prepared to stand up to Trump and indeed Putin but he also wants to be friendly uh, with them and my view is that President Macron will be will do um, uh, is due a few ugly confrontations with uh, to test his uh, mettle as a politician and politics shouldn't be this easy and if he wants to get things done, he should show a lot more toughness. Do you mean confrontations with the 
elements of the French uh, public or, or confrontations with foreign leaders? Uh, with foreign leaders. I think at the moment uh, uh, he's very much in the Trudeau mould. He's proved that he's a form magnificent electoral vehicle, as we've seen. Uh, he's also, of course, a great foreign policy uh, vehicle. But can he actually achieve anything beyond uh, being an attractive uh, representative of modern France that remains to be seen and just as I would contend that just as with his domestic policy he wants to get on with everyone but uh, and so far he's proven to be incredibly lucky he's very much portrayed as the new arrival the new kid on the block but when it comes down to persuading uh, um, for example President Putin to lay off Ukraine uh, will he be able to do so? What, what about his relationship with Germany? Because, I mean, the direction he wants to take, Macron wants to take the European Union, is not the direction which Angela Merkel wants to go in. There, there's always been a fundamental clash between Berlin and Paris, and it basically comes down to money. Because Berlin has always said, we don't want the Eurozone to become a permanent fiscal transfer union, i.e. we will continually be paying for the bad debts of other countries. Including, unless, France, yeah, including yeah. France, unless you make some reforms. So it's very interesting, though, Macron was very popular in Germany in the, in the run-up to his presidential bid, uh, his bid to get into the Elysee. Interestingly, as soon as he was elected president, uh, Spiegel, which is one of the big uh, weeklies in Germany, had a headline saying, you know, Germany's most expensive friend, because they're afraid, Germany has always been afraid and will continue to be afraid that France will ask for more money without doing the necessary reforms. And that is a debate which one could argue that because Macron and Merkel now realize there has to be some kind of grand compromise in the Eurozone that they'll be able to make movements towards. On the other hand, I would imagine if you're the German finance minister, Wolfgang Schäuble, you'd be like, no more money. So that divide, which has always existed, is not going to go away overnight. So from a British point of view, jolly good. Divide and rule. Like we're, not, <laughs> we're not going to have a Franco-German engine. <laughs> well, I would slightly disagree. I think, you know, Macron's very pragmatic nature, again, w will take over. I think he's passionately pro-EU. He's made a big deal out of this. He calls Brexit a crime. And he sees Brexit as an opportunity to actually strengthen the Franco-German relationship. He'd rather have a UK, uh, the UK as an ally, but if not, uh, the um, founding fathers will continue to dominate. And let's not forget that he's, he's a free marketeer, he believes in making Absolutely. money, he's a capitalist, Absolutely. and he has in mind, you know, whatever you think about the, the France's situation domestically, France is, uh, has magnific is a magnificent exporter nation. So he'll have in mind all those French multinationals who uh, dominate in everything from uh, nuclear power to waste disposal, disposal, and he would want to make sure that uh, those markets uh, will continue yeah. to uh, be guaranteed for those national Okay, well, and where does uh, Theresa May fit into all this? Well, she's quite sidelined, isn't she? I don't think that even when it looked like she was going to sweep up at the general election, she was the most popular amongst the European colleagues, primarily because I don't think she spent much time at those bilaterals building up relationships with the European leaders. And since the election, I think her hand is very much weakened. So I think European leaders were actually a little bit dismayed at what after the general election, because at least if Theresa May had won that huge majority, then they would have been negotiating with somebody who had a strong mandate, as she laid out in her Lancaster House speech. Now they feel we're not certain. What if we spend a lot of political capital negotiating a deal? We don't know if that's going to fall apart as soon as it comes home. So I think they're expecting rocky waters ahead. Rocky waters. <laughs> Thank you both very much indeed.